and we are back. Like, literally, straight back. Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome to the space program, the Kerbal Space Program, in fact. This is our interplanetary fleet mission. This is the series in which we try and assemble this big, massive interplanetary station that we are going to take to a different planet. Where we left off, we have... We are in the process of completing the assembly of our prototype for the interplanetary fleet, and this is one of the landers with the awesome lander icon that you can't zoom in on. Um, are we ready to launch? I think our launch window has about arrived. So, here we are with our crewmen, Tomfrid and John Ford. John Ford. And we are ready to launch the Space Station Lander Mark 1 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, liftoff! Very nice, and we can turn off those gimballing engines, because I have them set to an action group to do so, if you remember the last episode, and we can time warp and see how this goes. Hopefully it won't blow up, hopefully it will work first time. That will be a first, because I haven't played around with this at all, it is literally, as you can probably tell from my intro, a few seconds after I finished recording docking number four, docking number five indeed. Oh, turning, turning is a sign of instability. Yep, there we go. See? See, what do I, what, I can predict everything, I am so clever. Or so stupid for building a ship that doesn't work. Um, it's not actually any inherent instability, it just happens occasionally. I don't really know why, but we can restart the flight, um, warp again to get the space station in the correct position, certainly. No, come on, I want a time warp. There we go, not physics warp. Come around, and that was, well, we missed the opportunity. Missed the launch window, they had to refuel. They had to get, they had to build a whole goddamn new ship, didn't they, because we blew up the last one, which wasn't very clever of us. There we go. Ship is in position, and we are ready to relaunch. Don't think we need to fix any problems. Let's probably just not time accelerate. Here we go, launching in 3, 2, 1, launch. And gimballing can be turned off. There we go. I think we'll give it a few minutes before accelerating time that much. We probably scared it a little, didn't we? Ah. Say ah for the little scared engine. So what are we going to do with this? Well, for those of you who have not seen the previous episode, I recommend you watch it before watching this one, because, in fact, I recommend you watch the first one before watching this one if you haven't seen it already. But um, here we have our lander that I threw together. I don't know whether it's capable, but that's not the point. This mission, if successful for its, you know, if the mission purpose, if we exceed and manage to do what this mission is intended to do in the first place, which is simply get the interplanetary station to Juna, which is where we're going, then we should be able to test out this lander design. Hopefully we will be able to, I'm rather looking forward to it, because I threw this together in the VAB upon a whim, um, and I think this has less torque than the three-man one, in fact I'm almost certain it does. There we go, that was detaching, and we're spinning like a bullet. Yeah, that happens. There we go. We'll actually look back at our ship for a second, here we go. Yeah, so it's it's composed, it's been put together, not necessarily in a hurry, but just hasn't been tested yet, so hopefully it will be successful on its maiden mission. So, here we are on its maiden mission. Uh, I actually took the time out after recording the video you are currently watching well not not this video but basically i took the thing to to juna i built a uh, a nuclear rocket and whatnot and it was just quickly thrown together but it works quite well um we actually have about maybe i, I don't know three quarters of our fuel left probably more than that so we have a decent amount of fuel and we're about to go in for our docking right now i've set up uh, for our docking, for our landing right now. I've set up the trajectory and everything, so that's fine. Um, it seems to be a pretty good design. I mean, there are some things I would change, uh, namely, if I've got solar panels on there, then I might as well put some batteries on. Um, what else is important enough? Uh, the ladder. There, there is actually no ladder on the side. Um, 
That's not a problem though, because obviously landing on Juna, the uh, the gravity is low and the atmosphere is thin enough that we can actually just use jetpacks to get back on the side. But it doesn't look so neat, does it now? But yeah, other than that, there's not an awful lot that I would really need to change, I don't think. It's a pretty solid design, and I think it'll definitely uh, make some sort of comeback come back in our actual interplanetary fleet. So here we are, racing down onto the surface. Look at that beautiful sight. Isn't it just nice? And we can see our instrumentation now, right there, telling us that we need to open the parachute. <laughs> and float down just gently, gently enough, certainly. And we can get a pretty good landing as well, uh, under five meters per second, certainly, which is all it really needs to be. There we go. And yeah, we can get out, do EVAing and whatnot. This is just to prove that the actual design works, which is always nice, isn't it? Because, I mean, despite the fact that it's just there as a placeholder on the actual prototype, I want to still do the mission, so yeah. Hopefully we'll get the entire thing done before Christmas. Or at least the entire prototype done before Christmas. I, I sincerely doubt we'll get the actual mission completed. But yeah, we can burn up, increase our periapsis. It's clear we have enough fuel. We're just under half now. Um, definitely enough to dock, I would hope, certainly. So yeah, bring it up, and then we can just burn a bit more, get our apoapsis up. I think we'll probably put it into a 100,000 uh, 100, meter orbit. It seems like a pretty good height. Low enough, but high enough. <laughs> bit of Goldilocks going on. And that's it. We, we have a decent amount of fuel left for any orbital changes we need to do in order to rendezvous. And um, definitely we have absolutely tons of RCS to use. So that's not a problem either. It's a pretty solid design. I'm happy that I managed to throw it together like that. So back to the original video. We have our landing craft about to dock with our prototype ship. Just coming in, getting that intersect sorted out. Put it down to one kilometer, point two kilometers, and then I screw it up and burn a bit more and don't fix it. But oh well. And we're back again. Yet again, um, not such a good intersect as last time. Point four is still pretty good though. We can time warp to it, certainly. Every time it freezes like this, I get really paranoid. I'm so used to uh, min encounters where <laughs> it, it freezes and then suddenly you're past your periapsis and bam, dead. Um, our target is over here. Now I was thinking, I mean, I know I was saying about how uh, I don't want to uh, have the engine anywhere near the target. And then I was thinking, oh, but we have so much fuel in here. Well, we don't have that much, actually. But the point is, I was thinking, we're going to have so much fuel in here that why not uh, try and dock the entire thing? And the argument against that at the moment is we don't actually have that much fuel, to be honest. Um... And plus, turning this entire thing takes so long. Look, in here we have one small tank's worth. Unless they've changed the values, that is. I'm going off of um, pre-.18 ones in my head. But we want to actually burn towards this. Come on. There we go. Right. So, yeah, I don't think... I'm going to pick my time. I'm going to separate this pretty soon. Pretty soon indeed. Um, I say indeed way too much now. I don't know what it is. I mean, I say indeed in my vocabulary quite a lot, but I seem to be saying it every other sentence. It annoys me. Because I don't like other people who say indeed. I don't know why I like saying it when I really don't like other people saying it. It's really weird. I'm really weird, come to think of it. But, you know, whatever. Uh, we are going to detach this thing now. Um, we're going to point it this way and detach it. Retrograde. And there we go! Detached. Now we just slightly burn away from it. There we go. This is probably an overpowered engine, you know. Probably. Right, now comes the terror of trying to dock without advanced SES. Well, let's burn towards the target a bit more. I think we've got the RCS pretty well balanced, or at least I hope so. 
coming in. Set our target. I feel this is going to be more of a collision than a smooth docking, but, you know, we'll make do. Alright, so we're coming in. Certainly coming in. Oh. Come on now. Oh god, I'm scared. I can't see what's going on. The camera angle so bad. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that, that's what's going on. <laughs> Go on, up and just push in. Sounds like I'm giving sex advice. Upwards. Come on! Go upwards, and we're going to launch this thing right in there. We're going to press it in, and then they're probably going to come out, and then we'll put it back in. Okay, we're getting close to that point. Getting close. It's because the dam station's turning. It really makes things complicated. More complicated than they should be. And the lack of RCS. And, and the small ship. And the everything. This is hard. This is a hard docking. I guess I've been almost spoiled by the easy ones I've had. Come on, are you close? No, oh, they're close. There we go. Close enough, certainly. Turn off your uh, SASU. And we should just be able to let it do its business. Alright, is that docked? Please say it's docked. Please work. Really appreciate you working. I don't know how much wobble we're going to get. When we, when we fire up these back engines, are these side laterally mounted components going to s sway around? There we go. Right, that's our first thing done. We shouldn't have put it so far forwards. We should have made these docking ports as close to the center mass as possible. Oh well. Oh well indeed. This is a prototype, so we can make a list of all the problems and then sort them in our actual full version. But that is this episode done, and it is in fact a shorter than usual one, I think. Last one was longer, I think, and this one is shorter, I think. Which is nice. Um... IBA view of here. Who is the guy with the window? You are the guy with the window. Can we switch to you, please? Um, how do I come out of this? Here we go. IVA. Very nice. Can we see the... Oh, God. What on earth is this? What on earth is it in front of our face? It's just it's just us bouncing and wobbling, isn't it? Yeah, the wobbling is never good. We want to control from there. Thank you very much. And there we go, that's the end of the episode, after some delaying. Or is it now? Well, no, it actually isn't. Here we have a craft that I've put together hurriedly in orbit with two docking ports. This is another test of our capabilities to see what is actually going to be included in the final interplanetary fleet. Um, and someone in the comments section, comment section told me that you can use two docking ports in sync. And I, I didn't even consider that. I, that is so cool, if it's true, which is what we're going to test right now. I kind of imagined that you'd only have one active at any one time between uh, two separate vessels, because I imagine that would be easier to code. But um, no, it, it, certainly, it certainly works. So here we go. We've attached with one of them, and you can see the other is actually bouncing out a little weirdly. Get out those solar panels, but... um. Yeah, you can see there that they are, it's wobbling a fair amount, and if we just right-click on them, the context menu does not say undock, so presumably they haven't docked yet. Um, nothing to worry about if this happens to you, it actually just uh, needs a bit of time, needs a bit of more wobbling in order to find its place. Absolutely, having them as close together as possible is a requirement, as in they need to match up. There's really not much leniency between them. But there we go, the wobbling seems to have stopped and we looked at it now and the context menu does show us an undock facility. So we absolutely need to do that for our final interplanetary station, for our ultimate station. Now, what are we going to do with this? Because we're not actually using this, so we might as well test some more and send it off to Juna using our flight planning 
turn the entire thing prograde and send it on its way. This is also a test of how um, it holds up against the lack of balancing, because you can see the fuel values down there in the bottom left, they are not equal. And they will be in the final design to make everything as good a possible chance as chance of succeeding, but they are not perfect. Now, you'll also notice, if you, if you remember, you'll have noticed that uh, only the centre, the core of this multiple docking port ship, only the centre one has any advanced SAS on it. I had to dock the other ones without it, which is hard, as we saw earlier in the video, but um, it really helps because it means multiple advanced SAS aren't fighting against each other, which was the problem we were having. And so, we send this to Juna and we managed to get it into a orbit around Juna. There's our lander there, just having tested that. And uh, do you know what this means, AIM DK? Do you know what this means? This means I've put a space station in orbit around Juna! Yes! Yes, I have. So, for those of you who weren't aware, he challenged me to do this before him, and so I have done it. There we go, and it wasn't even- it didn't even have a very good chance of succeeding, and I still did it, so... Yeah. Owned. <laughs> As I believe the kids are saying nowadays. Oh god. But anyway guys, thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked the video, then please do like the video. Um, there is, if you see there, the test pilot submissions rules thingy-majobby. That is actually a video explaining how you need to make your ship eligible for the ship. Uh, how uh, For the test pilot show. How to is also in the description, but you know, you might as well click that and watch it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.